One of the reasons I use Linux and one of the reasons I enjoy using Linux is the customization options you get. You can completely switch around any part of your operating system uh, so that it can work the way that you want it to work. And uh, one of the more livelier topics of debate down in the comment section of many of these videos are what kind of desktop environment do you use and the pros and cons of using each of the various ones. So I thought that I might actually sort of do a bit more of a formal investigation as to the pros and cons of various uh, desktop environments and then do videos talking about my experiences with them and I'm actually going to use them for at least a week but the first couple that are on the list I've actually used for significantly longer and today I'm going to be talking about Cinnamon. Cinnamon is the default desktop environment available for Linux Mint. It is uh, four years old according to the Wikipedia article. It was started in 2011. The latest stable release was the 1st of November 2014 as of, of course the time of recording. That's only two months ago. It's still very much in active development. Its license is GPL version version 2 and it is developed by the Linux Mint team and is incorporated very much into the Linux Mint uh, operating system and it is one that I actually really enjoy using. Now there's a bit of a colourful history behind it. Uh, Linux Mint is designed to be as appealing to as broad a user base as possible and it's designed to be particularly friendly to uh, Windows to Linux converts and therefore they want to design around uh, their operating system around that concept and, and to make it somewhat similar to Windows so that people wouldn't feel too much like a fish out of water when they decided to pick up the Linux baton. Now, when GNOME 3 was released, uh, all of you guys are probably going to be familiar with the fact that they changed around their user interface a lot in, in a hugely drastic way. Um, and in, in ways that i got to admit, I think that I... I I appreciate them experimenting with uh, their user interface and I think that it's a worthwhile experiment. Um, but i got to admit, uh, I, I, I felt the same way that the Linux Mint people did and I thought that it was perhaps not going in a direction which I thought was particularly helpful. Um, so, uh, in response to this, the Linux Mint people actually started out by making a new front end for um, GNOME, a shell. So you had um, GNOME and then you had a shell on top of it, which looked very similar to how Linux Mint has always looked. And it has that kind of aesthetic that it's pretty much always had, just that single taskbar down the bottom in a, in a very Windows-esque fashion. And they managed to do that, but um, for reasons that are explained on the Wikipedia page, I won't go into them too much now, they realized that just slapping on a shell on top of GNOME wasn't a long term solution so they decided to actually fork GNOME itself and uh, of course that's one of the beauty uh, or the, one of the amazing aspects of using um, open source is that you can actually fork something if you don't agree with the direction it's going in and they actually decided to to just make a fork of GNOME that was very much within Linux Mint's vision of what a desktop environment and a user interface should be um, and thus Cinnamon uh, was born or at least um, the modern incarnation of Cinnamon. And uh, now there are a few differences to Cinnamon to GNOME. It has, um, I believe it has a uh, a uh, file manager called Nemo and it's got a few gadgets that kind of aren't GNOME, but it still uses the GTK Plus toolkit um, and it's still very much, you know, it's still very much a, a traditional, even within the Linux realms and the technical side of things, desktop environment, but it would be being forked from GNOME. Uh, it's, uh, a lot of people consider it, it, it's what GNOME 3 almost should be, or should have been, and maybe that, that, that the, the new user interface should have been like an add-on or, or a, an alternative layout or something to that effect. Now, you can actually bring back the old classic, uh, GNOME look, the more traditional desktop look in GNOME, and I'll be looking at that later when I actually start trying out uh, GNOME. Uh, but yeah, Cinnamon, it's very much designed for uh, Windows converts, it's designed to be user-friendly, it's designed to be sort of easy and nice, and um, I've been using it for a long, 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 long time uh, now because I'm a big uh, fan of Linux Mint, and you don't become a big fan of Linux Mint without learning a few things about Cinnamon. Uh, it's their flagship um, desktop environment, but it's not their only one. They also promote it alongside Mate. I know that it's pronounced, I think it's pronounced Mate, but I, I, being British, it's, it's, it just looks like Mate to me. And they, pr uh, they promote it side by side, and I think that, from a marketing standpoint, is a mistake, uh, because a Cinnamon edition and a Mate edition, I mean, someone who, who, who's not used to how Linux works and not used to 
being able to choose your own desktop environment. I don't know why, you know, the virtues of one over the other might, might not be obvious. You might have Mate as being, I don't know, you, you call it something like lightweight or compact, and then you'd have uh, Cinnamon, which is like the main version um, or something to that effect. But no, Mate and Cinnamon, it's, it's Linux and Linux distributions are still working on, on their marketing, but they're catching up, they're getting there. Some, some have got some good, good marketing um, setups, and, and Mint is one of the better ones, so I'm not going to be too hard on it. It doesn't make that many mistakes, but one of the mistakes it does make is that it doesn't make a too clear distinction between the two versions that it's uh, presenting to you. And in fact, I don't know whether or not it might necessarily be more work than is worthwhile to have both of them. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy it uh, using Cinnamon. It's straightforward. It's 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 pretty lightweight really it doesn't have too many fancy uh, bells and whistles on it um but it's not i wouldn't call it a lightweight desktop environment uh but yeah easy to use it's got a control panel like you might find in windows it's got the panel menu um there are a few things that i am perhaps a little bit i'm not gonna be too critical of it because it is again it's a new desktop environment um and it's still building its user base um and it's still building its community um and it's still working itself out for a, for its long-term strategy. So I'm not necessarily going to criticize it or compare it to GNOME or KDE, which have been around for a lot longer, because they have been around for a lot longer. Um, but uh, as as a you know for a four year old project it's it's doing very very well a lot better than I actually thought it would. I thought that it it, it would be struggling about this point, um, but I guess. Um, uh, I guess uh, I guess I was wrong, but anyway, um, yeah. Some of the, some of the things that I, I'm, I I was a bit not too happy with, I guess that sounds a bit strong. Is that there's only two, uh, there's only two. The first is, um, and well, there's two, and there's kind of a, like a, a a third that's not not important. The first is um, the uh, third party uh, third party add-ons that you can get for Cinnamon. These are things that customise the look of the menu. Um, they allow you to uh, mess around with the positions of the taskbar and things like that. The problem I had with it is that updating from one version of Cinnamon to another version of Cinnamon through upgrading Linux Mint, which is how I did it at the time, I found that a lot of the third-party add-ons then ceased to work. Now, that could arguably be the fault of the third-party add-on. It could be a fault of the infra infrastructure. I don't know, and I don't know sort of what the intentions were behind that. Um, but I actually found that quite, uh, well, yeah, quite frustrating because I had Mint um, and Cinnamon laid out exactly as I wanted to, and then... Um, and then I did an upgrade, which I thought was a minor upgrade, and then there were a few uh, there were a few third-party add-ons that I was really quite getting sort of you know it fit like a glove at that point. It'd be nicely nicely worn in like a pair of jeans, and um, and then and then it sort of got turned on its head. Yeah, I could downgrade and then faff around like that, but downgrading an OS or downgrading uh, Cinnamon is I don't know. It, it, it was more trouble than it's worth, in, at least in my opinion. Um, you know, you pick Linux Mint because you want something easy and straightforward, and if you have to downgrade to to avoid a bug, that's defeating the purpose. That's de defeating the objective of it, I guess, in my opinion. Um, I, you know, I, one of the reasons I use Linux Mint, one of the reasons I do quite like Cinnamon, is because it's it's a no nonsense distribution. It's a no nonsense setup. You install it, you go, boom. Uh, it comes with software that you know. It comes with um, a, an existing um, Library, you know, it comes with like the 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 out of the box installation. You know, includes software that you you are likely to use uh, and the community are likely to use. It has a user interface that's intuitive and it's easy. It's set up just the way you like it, right out from in, you know, right out of installation. Um, so uh, you know, I choose Mint because I don't want to mess around with it. So I sort of I'm inclined to push it away whenever it requires any kind of finesse. Um, and but that being said, though um, vanilla cinnamon is uh, that's a weird turn of phrase. Um, is uh, it's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, the second problem that I had with it was multiple monitor support, uh, which is where the third parties came in. The third parties actually gave additional help when it came to managing things like taskbars and whatever on um, on monitors. Right. So my setup is a little bit unique, but I'm sure there are other people with multiple monitors. I have like a big main monitor. My big main monitor is where I play games and where I do anything that requires high definition. It's nice, it's big. I have a secondary monitor, which is a sig significantly smaller monitor, and I use that for as a as a side thing, you know, for secondary uh, programs that I might have open. It's a nice little setup, and I really, really like it. However, 
However, uh, I like my big monitor to be the main monitor, because whenever I play games, that's where I want the games to load up on. But I want the taskbar on the secondary monitor. That way I can manage things, um, you know, sort of off the main monitor. The main monitor is almost like the stage, and then the, the uh, secondary monitor is almost like the, the lighting and effects room. Um, and that's how I kind of see it. So it would be, it, it, I really like having the taskbar on the secondary monitor. Also, it gives me more space on the main monitor. So the interesting and unique setup that that brings is that the main monitor uh, needs to be the primary display, whereas the taskbar needs to reside on the secondary display. Whereas Cinnamon, you don't get that nuance. Um, it doesn't allow you, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't extend it to you. Um, it, uh, with Cinnamon, you have to have the taskbar on the primary monitor, and there's there's no negotiation uh, in regards to that. Now you can use th third-party add-ons to get around that, but like I said, it came with the problem of when I upgraded, they broke. So and and it wasn't just like one or two; about half of them, maybe a third of them, broke. So um, that yeah, and like I say, I don't know if that's the problem with with Mint or whether or not that's the problem with the third-party add-ons. Whether or not it was just a problem with the infrastructure, but like I say, it's it's new and it's growing. So I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not particularly condemning it for that. That is a very small um, criticism that it affected me in a big way because I have a particularly in unique setup. Um, but uh, and the third, but like I say, it's a minor thing and it's not necessarily a criticism of it. It's just a criticism of it if you look at it in a particular way. Is that it, uh, the lack of customizability in it? Uh, the lack of lack of customizability in it means that you can't say move around your taskbars and whatever. Um, that is also in a, in a lot of ways a positive because. If Linux is ever going to become more accessible to more kinds of people, it needs to have um, more GUI options, uh, graphical options, uh, without having to resort to the command line in order to fix any kind of problem that might arise. The command line in and of itself is a fantastic tool to use, and it is a really great way of, of solving problems. The only problem is, of course, with uh, Windows converts is that they don't like dipping into the command line. I've got to admit, I don't like doing it either, um, but it is good in the sense that it allows you to custom, you know, no matter how much you customize your operating system, whether or not, you know, which whatever desktop environment you use, whatever window manager you use, you've always got that command line, which is the the central point. Everything remains constant on the command line, uh, and it and you don't have to worry about uh, what uh, desktop environment you're running, what's you know other bits and pieces that you've you've customized your system with. Um, so. Yeah, like I say, uh, a little more customizability, yeah, possibly, but maybe this isn't the desktop environment for that criticism. I don't know. Um, it's just, uh, it's just a thought, anyway. I got to admit, I am a big fan of very traditional desktop environments. I I like the LXDE layout, um, and I was never really that big a fan of the panel option whenever you used, um, you know, whenever they brought it in on uh, on Linux Mint. But it, it has grown um, with me. Uh, or grown on me rather over time and I do kind of actually like how the panel is done um, in this one as well I like how you could just uh, press the Windows key or the meta key or whatever it's called and then you can just start typing in uh, what program you want and go um, so yeah it's great it's uh, certainly one that I'd recommend it's certainly a very good choice um, for for people that want something that's Windows-esque user-friendly um, like GNOME 2 possibly, um, and who don't want to spend too much time faffing around with an operating system. If you've got a single monitor, it's it's near flawless, I would say. It depends what you consider. Um, uh, you know, also it takes into account it's it's not necessarily a lightweight operating um, lightweight desktop environment, um, but to me, it's lightweight enough that it's it's it doesn't sort of show up on uh, it doesn't present any problems or anything like that so guys of course I've really only managed to scratch the surface with cinnamon here um, I've been using it for months upon months um, because I've been using Linux Mint for a for a long time now um, and uh, and I've become very very familiar with it but um, like I say I do enjoy using it and I'd like to hear from you in, on this one as well um, again I'm only one perspective and I've got to admit with my particular layout of dual monitors uh, it's perhaps not the most typical 
um, setup that I've got running as well. So uh, feel free to leave your thoughts on Cinnamon down in the comments section below. If you have any recommendations you would like to see me try out, feel free to leave them, of course, down in the uh, comments section below as well. But I will be pretty much aiming to try just about any desktop environment, and I'll be trying some of the lesser-known ones as well, uh, just to sort of have some juxtaposition in there. Um, but thanks very much for watching. That's about it from me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.